This is the first in a series of videos I want to do on logical fallacies employed by progressives. And this first one, I want to talk about the true Scotsman fallacy. The true Scotsman fallacy is one of the favorites employed by progressives consistently. We see it almost every day. And it is a verified a logical fallacy. If you take a philosophy course in logic, you'll be taught a bunch of logical fallacies, fallacious arguments to make, and the logical Scotsman is one of them. What exactly is the fallacy? Now, the true Scotsman fallacy takes various forms, but they usually run something along these lines. There are two Scotsmen, Duncan and Malcolm, and they usually get together for breakfast at a local place. They read the paper and they drink coffee, maybe have a pastry or two. And the one morning, Duncan's reading the paper, and he goes, Oh my God, Malcolm, you're not going to believe this. Down in Kent, some guy went berserk, took a kitchen knife, killed his wife and his daughter. How horrible is that? And Malcolm listens, and he replies, and he says, Kent, that's in England, the English. No Scotsman would do such a thing. A few days later, the two are at breakfast again, having their coffee, reading the newspaper. And Duncan says, oh my God, look at this story. In Glasgow, a man took a machete, killed his wife, cut her to pieces, and then butchered five children five of his own children. Malcolm, didn't you say the other day no Scotsman would do that? And Malcolm thinks for a second, rubs his chin, and finally says, what I should have said was no true Scotsman would do such a thing. That's the true Scotsman fallacy. Now, if you pay attention to the news, you see progressives employ that logical fallacy all the time. Remember when Joe Biden said, you know, if you're voting for Trump, you ain't black? In other words, no true African-American would vote for Donald Trump. We see it with uh, Ayanna Presley, the video I used in my main clip for this channel. You know, black people should speak with a black voice, brown people with a brown voice, Asians with an Asian voice. Muslims with a Muslim voice. And the idea is if you don't fit the appropriate voice, you're not brown. You're not a real brown person. You're not a real whatever. You're not really gay. You're not a real woman. Back in the 1980s, when I was working in Washington, I got in an argument with a woman I worked with when she said that, you know, if women were in charge, they were all pacifists and we wouldn't have as many wars. And I asked her about, you know, Indira Gandhi. I asked her about Margaret Thatcher. I asked her about, you know, the prime minister of Israel during the uh, 73 war, Golda Meir. I said, were they pacifists? And she paused for a few moments, just like Malkin in the description of the fallacy. And she said, they weren't real women. Whereas Margaret Thatcher is not a real woman. Golda Meir wasn't a real woman. And Dear Gandhi wasn't a real woman. This is the true Scotsman fallacy. And the progressives employ it all the time. It's that simple. Pay attention to the news. You'll see them employ it. You know, Richard Grinnell, who's a homosexual, was an ambassador to Germany, did a great job, came back. He was a interim or acting director of national security or national intelligence, whatever it was. He's gay. He supports Trump. But he's not a true gay. He's not real gay. And it's the same with any conservative women who support Trump, or even if they don't support Trump and they're conservative women, they're not real women. And if you're an African-American and you support Trump, you're seen with a MAGA hat, you're not a real African-American. And so it goes for all the other ethnic identities that we have but they do it all the time. What annoys me to no end 
isn't so much that they do it, because I understand why they do it. They get away with it. What annoys me is all these people in the media, all these people in the media who claim to be well-educated, and some of them on paper at least are. They may have gone to Harvard or Yale or, or Dartmouth or, or Penn or Princeton, or Brown, wherever. And I've never once seen anybody challenge any of these progressives and say, wait a minute, aren't you applying a logical fallacy? Isn't that the true Scotsman fallacy? No true woman would think that way. No true African-American would think that way. No true gay person would think that way. It's the true Scotsman fallacy. And they employ it over and over and over. And they employ it over and over and over because no one ever challenges them. Just once, I would love to see somebody say to one of these people, say to Diana Presley, say to Joe Biden, say to AOC or any of these other people, hey, isn't that the true Scotsman fallacy you just used? Isn't that by definition a fallacious argument? But that's never going to happen. I don't know it's because the people in the media don't know about fallacious arguments, never took a logic course, never took a philosophy course, or they just don't want to embarrass anybody by pointing out that progressives routinely employ logical fallacies. If you have a favorite logical fallacy that Democrats employ all the time, progressives employ all the time, let me know in a comment. Uh, if you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. And of course, subscribe to the channel. That's the best way to support this channel. And until the next time, as I keep saying, to confront the resistance, what we all need to do is to stand up and keep fighting.